So this video is something that I've wanted to make for a long time. And at first I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be super easy. Yeah, I could just explain how to depict and draw emotions. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be a breeze. <sighs> but the more I thought about it, the more I realized how wrong I was. I mean, even if I do cover all or most of the points and how to do this, like I don't think I'll be able to cover everything within every point. I, I guess the best I could do is just lead you guys in the right direction. But at the same time, this is coming from my own personal experience and my journey with art. I mean, I was the one who taught myself how to depict my own emotions and feelings onto the paper. Everyone does it a little bit differently. But hopefully in this video, I'll be able to help you guys better understand how to depict your own emotions and feelings through artwork in a more organic way. So yeah, let's get into it. Every individual has a unique way of feeling and understanding the world. I mean, just think about the many thoughts or abstract feelings that you choose not to express every day. There's things that go on in my head that seem nearly impossible to express in words, but sometimes art can connect that bridge between the mind and reality. The translation from mind to canvas will probably never live up to the exact feeling, but it can express more than language in thousands of different ways. A few years ago, I was doing a career project for school where I had to study someone in the same field of work I wanted to be in, and I ended up shadowing a tattoo artist. On this particular day, I was drawing in my sketchbook alongside some of the tattoo apprentices, and I found myself trading sketchbooks with a few of them. For me, I put my all into every sketchbook page I do. I've spent 10 plus hours on nearly every page, honing in on every little detail. So I trade my sketchbook over with this girl sitting across from me, who is about my age. This was a first for me, as I never hang around other artists, so in my head I was super excited thinking that I was getting the opportunity to flip through a sketchbook with drawings as detailed as mine. But as I opened it, I was kind of met with a little disappointment and the realization that I'm one of the very few that takes sketchbooks this seriously. But then something else caught my eye, and imagination. Though her work was very scarce on every page, it was better than anything I had seen come out of the art class at my high school. To me, what this girl had accomplished was something that so many artists around our age couldn't, expressing energy and movement onto the page like I had never seen before. Her characters were minimal in line work, but every stroke added more energy. Characters danced on the page, and every movement expressed an emotion that was encapsulated within the energy of the character. I learned from that experience that to express emotions and feelings through art, it doesn't require hours or days of work. It could be as simple as a few lines if you know what you're doing. It's not about knowing how to draw or emulating a style that will allow you to express intense emotions and feelings. To be able to express something that goes beyond words through a visual art form, in my opinion, requires the artist to be genuine and in tune with their own feelings. Understand what it feels like to be excited, angry, or mad, and hone in on that energy that you feel from those emotions. Don't focus on the words that come to mind when you think about that time you were overwhelmed with happiness or sadness, but think about the pure energy and start finding patterns, motions, colors, and everything that you could possibly think of that brings you closer to that initial feeling. Emotions and feelings are really anything can be expressed in infinite ways, but part of what can make a work of art so special is the uniqueness and one-of-a-kind imagination that is expressed for everyone to take in. When I'm expressing a feeling or an emotion through a character, I find that the eyes and the mouth are the most important parts. However, personally, I don't like drawing complete faces, partly because I find it to be too boring and sometimes I don't like how it completes the character's look. Most of the time, I will instead cover the eyes or the mouth in order to hide one part of the character to leave it up to the viewer's imagination. What this also allows me to do is to focus on the emotions through purely just the eyes or the mouth. This makes it easier for the viewer to identify the emotion and it allows for me to simplify the expression in a sense. Sometimes I will tape over the mouth or give the character holes for eyes, limiting the possibilities of what emotion is being portrayed. I would encourage anyone to at least try this technique out to learn how to intensify emotion through just one of these five senses. However, this is just one aspect of depicting emotion. The human face has evolved to show a colorful range of expressions, but that's only one part of the puzzle. As I said earlier, everyone has a unique way of feeling and understanding the world, meaning emotions and feelings go beyond what's inside one's head and what's written on their face. The feeling of the world around and the way it looks plays a huge part in how one perceives the world, and expressing the feeling of one's surroundings is equally, if not more, important than the characters. But that really depends on what you're even illustrating. Maybe your piece doesn't have a character, or maybe it doesn't have a background. Who knows? Sometimes the character's head or body will morph into the very energy I'm trying to display. 
The characters will burst into flames or morph into elegant streams of calm, flowing strands of goo, expressing their feelings through altering their body. Other times, the emotion will show in the shakiness of the lines that make up the world, or in the vibrant colors, or the emptiness of the space around. I like to imagine drawings like one is orchestrating a song. It's not just the beat you have to worry about, or the melody. It's about how every element interacts, mixes, or clashes with each other, and trying to reach that full or complete sound. It's to give every square inch of that canvas or paper the same amount of effort and attention to detail that ties it all together. However, I could only speak on what I know, and I think that's about as much anyone could offer you. Everyone has a different way of learning and translating what's in their head into art, so it's really up to you, the individual, to figure it out. You are the one that has to make those decisions of what stays in your head and what goes on the paper. No one could really do it for you. I've learned that the more confident you are in your idea and in your abilities, the more genuine your artwork will look. If you could show that confidence and authenticity, I've learned it'll reach a lot further. If you pull from a deep place within yourself and spend your time and energy to hone in on what that abstract feeling is, it'll be felt by the audience in one way or another. I mean, art is subjective at the end of the day, so not everyone sees what you see in your own work, but that's kind of the beauty of it. For me, I've always created art because I love the process. I don't really care too much about starting a drawing or worrying about the final result. I really live for just being in the moment and using all I have at my disposal to create something interesting. Because I'm not worried about the final product, I could relax and with a calm mind approach anything with confidence. But again, it's very rare for someone to set out and on their first time create exactly what they were going for, let alone the 10th, 50th, or even 100th time. Over the 11 years that I've been drawing almost every day, I only have a handful of pieces that I could say went according to plan, if not better than expected. Art to me is not really a goal you reach, it's more of a journey where you learn stuff along the way and learn to live with what's already happened. I mean, for me, this took years to develop as I found drawing from your head to be one of the hardest things to capture. I mean, it is hard to go straight to just depicting feelings and emotions. I mean, first I had to build the foundation of my style and that took years of conscious learning. If you don't know what conscious learning is, it's basically just doing the thing that you're trying to do without any distraction. I mean, you guys probably do this as much as I do, but you know, when I go to draw, sometimes I'll turn on a podcast, listen to music or turn on a TV show while I draw, but you're not even giving full attention to the drawing. You're just kind of auto piloting as you're kind of more focusing on what you're watching or listening to. That's kind of the thing. If you were to give 100% to your drawing, I bet you'd become a lot more efficient and you would become a lot better faster. But if you love making art, you know that you're playing the long game when it comes to developing your style and skills. I mean, this none of this stuff happens overnight. And still to this day, no piece that I do is a perfect translation but I'm still able to depict it in a way that I'm somewhat happy with. I guess I've just learned to let go of thinking that I'll ever reach perfection. I don't know, does does reaching perfection even exist? Maybe you could only get closer to it. Maybe you, like, there's no such thing as the perfect thing. I guess that's up to your perception. I don't know though, I'm just kind of rambling now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys love the stuff I create or the content I make or the clothes I'm even wearing, check out all the links in my description to my web shop, my TikTok, my Instagram. You guys could find a lot more stuff on there. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped. I'll see you guys on the next one.